I like your shirt. Guys, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Congratulations to everybody on the show, but you guys on the Grammy nomination. Thank you so much. We're Thank really you excited. So, much. so happy for everybody involved, <laughs> yeah. but not us. That's really great, though. They, uh, the, ca the, the cast uh, is nominated for uh, a Grammy for the album. It's really wonderful. Congratulations Thank to the you. show. Yes, it's really, it is really exciting. It's, it's actually an incredible album, and uh, they worked very hard on it. Uh, so, Noah, let's talk about you coming onto the show this past month and um, replacing Ben, who is play who's the original Evan Hansen. What, is that, what has that been like for you? What's the process been like there? Um, the process was, uh, <clears throat> it's been great. It's been a great process. It was scary at first, um, filling the shoes of a person who's won a Tony for the role that you have to then you know, uh, take on, uh, it, it's, it's a daunting situation to be in, but, uh, I think all the anxieties I had sort of fell away once I sort of stepped into the rehearsal room for the first time. Um, I was also, I, my biggest fear was that all eyes were just sort of going to like be on me for this month of rehearsal. Um, but I was really lucky to have a couple of new understudies that also came into the show when I did. So I got to sort of share my rehearsal process with these people and almost have a, a real rehearsal process like Ben would have had with the original cast. So, so that felt really cool. You're wonderful in the show. I got to see it last week. You Thanks. do an incredible job. I can't imagine the feeling, though, of, like you said, sort of stepping into this role just after, you know, Ben had been doing it for, what, three years at this point? And it was kind right. of, I mean, for him, that's going to be this sort of iconic thing that is associated with him for the rest of his career. Yeah. For you, you're sort of stepping in, and I'd imagine you're... The first thing you want to say is, let me do this my way, even though all of you know it this particular way. Yeah, I've said this before, and I think a lot of, <clears throat> I think a, there is a, a large part of me that wanted to, like, you know, put my stamp on this role and, like, make it my own, but I haven't gotten to say this to you yet. Um, but so much of the, I think, one, upon receiving my script and, like, picking apart all of the, the dialogue, I realized that so much of this character lives within Stephen's <clears throat> very, very rich text. Absolutely. And there wasn't much work that I really had to do because it all was there, like the self-editing and the repetition in his speech and all of that, you know? No, I couldn't agree more. And that is something that I noticed last, last week as well, that the things that have been, I mean, and, you know, Ben did an amazing job, but the things so associated with him are directly there in that text. Yeah. They're very well crafted. The writing does a lot of yeah, work, it's essentially. A, it's a yummy, yummy roadmap. Well, and I will say, you know, uh, part of the challenge, I think, for any actor... We had so many actors come into the audition room and sort of do a Ben Platt impression, which I think is the, the temptation, is, is to recreate that performance. And what we, the creative team, were, what we were really looking for were people who were going to come in and, and make it their own. And Noah absolutely has. Um, you know, we've seen Ben do the show and marvelously. Um, but now it's sort of like, well, what are you going to bring to this that's unique and different and... Um, I think for those of you who have seen it, Noah brings something totally different and totally original, while of course still maintaining fidelity to the, the, the vision of the character there. How, how easy or hard was it for you to kind of let go of what the show had been for so long and allow for someone like Noah to come in? I mean, you said that you were looking for that in the audition, but getting to that place, what was that like for you? It's, it's a challenging thing. I mean, there, were, there are definitely times... Um, I, I came into the rehearsal process with Noah really, really late. I just came and saw basically uh, when he was already running through the show, which was kind of bizarre because <laughs> with, with the rest of the show, with Ben and, and all the other actors, we, we developed the show with them over years and years. Um, and that's and, the other crazy thing. You're still yeah. with all the original cast. Right. Yeah, yeah. I feel really, yes. really lucky. Yeah. Um, so, so it was weird to like walk into a rehearsal room and it's like, how did he learn all of this? I wasn't here. We weren't here. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, it's such a bizarre feeling, um, but also a really amazing feeling. And I think part of the challenge is trying to separate as a writer um, what you remember, like your sort of muscle memory of the part. Like you hear lines a certain way. Yeah. You see scenes a certain way and trying to differentiate between different and incorrect. Do you know what I mean? Because sometimes it's like, oh, well, that's not the... And then you're like, oh, wait, no, that's just a choice. And, and so it's, it's, that's been a really interesting learning experience for, for all of us, I think, is to, is to kind of sit back and watch and try to evaluate things on their own terms. 
Well, what's it been like? Uh, I mean, you you crafted the show for like for three years, right? And yeah, so it was basically yeah. on on Broadway, or while it was on, uh, well, years on Broadway. Well, we started we started writing it in 2011. Right. So, um, and then we had a production in DC in 2015, and then off which Broadway, I got to and see Broadway. Oh wow! Oh, I think I knew that. Yeah, I've gotten to see uh, it in every iteration. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, with the actors, um, with many of the actors that are still in it, and Ben, it was about three and a half years. So when you when you came for 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 Noah, and he was already sort of in the midst of rehearsing, was there a part of you that sort of wanted to rework and write some scenes for Noah? Because you had this two and a half years with Ben, where you can kind of craft it around everything you know about his a per, him as a performer, and Noah's kind of jumping into that. Was there a part of you that wanted to be like, oh, I wish I could challenge Noah with this and throw this at him? Yeah, I, that's actually. I've never, um, I've only ever written plays that have run off Broadway for a few months at a time. So coming back to see this show a year later, it's, there are so many things I would love another crack at. <laughs> um, and I kind of have to restrain myself. Um, Cause I just, as a writer, I just constantly kind of want to experiment and try new things. Um, That's a weird thing as a writer is that it's, it's not that really your taste weird. changes, that emotionally you're in a different place when you're yes, writing one day or exactly. watching another day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so it's been interesting. I think, I think what's been great, though, is to feel like... W w or what's great and so strange is that the piece was evolving for such a long time, so it never felt like the settled thing. And now it is literally something where we can give a script to an actor and say, this is it. Um, and all of those tiny things that we worked and reworked are just kind of settled now. And so I think it's a great um, liberating thing for the actors to be able to just learn the part. I mean, so many of these actors had to be tortured by like endless, like the number of versions we had of just the tying of the tie and like when he stands, <laughs> when he flips the collar. Like, I can't even tell you. We did that for like weeks. I, I really so something wondered. Something that terrifies me. <laughs> I, well, I wondered about the tying of the tie and I kept, I went, like both times I seen him, I'm like, oh, that poor actor. Like, what if they fuck up tying the tie right now? Well, and Ben got to have like time. three years of practice it's and true. I didn't. And I, they didn't give me like, and I'm also, I'm also a lot smaller than Ben. <laughs> so they didn't give me like the proper size tie until about a week before I started. And I, th Ben, this is really how me and Ben's performances, you know, differ, is that he buttons his top button. I do not, because I'm it's crazy. terrified. It's, yeah, it really changes <laughs> things. Um, I'm terrified that I'm not going to be able to tie the tie in time. <laughs> so silly. But no, yeah. I really, I find, like, tying the tie and <laughs> dropping the note card to be two of the hardest things they are really technical they're very technical they feel very emotional and visceral yeah. and in the moment right and well, so even if you know how to tie a tie you make mistakes like it's a yeah. thing that right. you're kind of like oh i went a little too low i gotta let me yeah exactly. do this again yes you just have to it has to become as technical as as possible you have to do it the same way every night in order to you mess it up at all yet not in performance. I'm going to do it tonight. Watch me. Yeah. <laughs> no, really sorry. sorry about that. Is the tie the thing that was the hardest part for you? <laughs> I'm serious. Like, <laughs> no, I'd say that scene in general was the hardest thing for me. And the thing I took the most time with, and the thing that Michael Greif, director extraordinaire, gave me the most time to sort of pick apart and deal with on my own. And I think there were a couple times where I just wanted to like jump in and just like work on this, you know, and just do it. And he was like, you know... Take your time. I don't know if you're like quite ready to 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 jump into that, you know, feet first yet. Um, well, that that is a moment that really, I think of that moment in particular as something that evolved very very gradually. And so, um, when Ben was doing it off Broadway, it was when we we put that moment in, and like it was like for a week, it was you know he just dropped a note card and then started singing, and then for another week, like, he got down on the ground for the first time, and so he's here today. Yeah. Um, and, um, <laughs> the ghost of, the ghost of Ben Platt past. will forever so haunt it, me. It's like, it's a Don't hard... Ruin my legacy. <laughs> there are, it is so, um, there are so many steps to it, and they're all emotionally important. Yeah. And so <laughs> it's like, um, uh, I, I think of that as a moment that, that Ben did have the luxury of, like, really kind of slowly stepping into, and... Yeah. And to just do it whole cloth is is a little terrifying. Yeah, just rip that bandaid yeah, totally. off. Totally, you know. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, the, the the note card and the tie and the tire. Those the, the two the, the same scenes. Ex excuse yeah. me for asking. Yeah, it's right. right. When you're giving the speech yeah. at the it's at the beginning of the second, the top of the second. Very act, end or? of this of the first. Act. Oh, end yeah. of the first act. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excuse mm -hmm. me. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. That scene looks impossible 
for for an actor. I mean, you do it incredibly well, but there's so much that you have to do. Yeah, it's also very yeah, it's heavily choreographed too. The dropping of the card, the way I sort of play with the cards and drop it, and then the like getting to the knees, and there's this whole thing about like breath, and then I was sort of breathing very heavily, and Michael wants me to do it all in silence, and you know. But at the same time, you're sort of getting to a really emotional place. Do you just have to rely on the choreography to sort of get yourself there, or are you? No, that's just an added little like fun thing that we get to just throw in there is that then you gotta cry, you know? Right. You just have to have a breakdown on top of all of that choreography. <laughs> right. You love it. I love it so much. <laughs> I love my job. Uh, Steven, I, we, I, I've interviewed a couple other members of the, the cast, and one thing I've always been fascinated about with this play is when you first started it, sort of the early drafts, it was much more of a kind of uh, toothy satire about mm -hmm. social media. And I've always been curious how it developed into, into, into what it did. When you, I wouldn't say you lost that, but when it became much more about the emotions of these characters and how it can help people. Yeah, well, definitely when, when Benj, Justin, and I started to talk about this idea, we, we did have these sort of competing visions in our heads. Um, we knew that one version of this story would be, a, like you said, a toothy satire on social media and narcissism and sort of our generation's, um, you know, incapacity to feel things. So we feel through other people's pain. Um, and then we knew that there was another version of the story that would somehow dig beneath that. And we weren't quite sure what that was. Yeah. But we knew pretty early on that that was what we wanted to do. Um, because we felt like the satire sort of wrote itself, you know, and, and we weren't that interested in it. Because social media satire is it's constantly so rewriting easy. itself every yes. other yeah, month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like. And it's so, like, it, it, that's the surface story. We all get that people are using social media to, you know, to prop up their own sense of self and uh, putting themselves into tragedies to fulfill some kind of personal wish. But what was interesting to us was, like, well, what's the human thing that, that actually is deep and profound and universal beneath that impulse to you know, go online when a celebrity has died or a, tra a disaster has happened and kind of put your own words on it and, and insert yourself into the story in some way. Um, and then, but, but sort of residues of that other version stayed with it for a long time, the satire version. Um, and I think just, we just kind of kept chipping away at that and especially when Michael Greif got involved, which was, I think, a year or two years into writing it, Michael read an early draft of the show and, and heard some early songs. And um, he immediately said, this is a show about two families. Um, it's about the Murphys and Evan and his mother and these two families and, and this boy who's caught in between. And he really gave us permission, I think, to dig into that emotional story and that personal story um, and we sort of relentlessly chased that since then, you know, trying to figure out how to make this story, you know, something we were really sensitive to is the fact that the catalyst of the story is the death of this boy that we don't really get to spend that much time with and we don't really get to know as well as we want to. And so some of the burden of Evan's story, I think, is to when you come to the end of the, the show, in some ways you realize that Evan's story is Connor's story. Um, that this, that Connor went one direction and Evan went another, but he could have very easily gone that same way. Right. Um, and so that was another way that we kind of figured out how to make it more emotional and more about this universal feeling of aloneness and, and this desperation for connection, really. <laughs> Um, one of the things that you guys are also here talking about is that uh, in November, I think it was released, there's a Dear Evan Hansen coffee table book that was created, right? That yes. The creators of the Hamilton uh, coffee table yes. book. Yes. Can you talk to me about Through the <clears throat> Through Window? Through the Window. Um, this was this book that, um, that we made and uh, with a group, uh, an incredible team of people at Melcher um, Media, who um, those are the Hamilton people. Um, and they did all of the, it's a beautiful book, the photography and the graphics are incredible. Um, and what Benj and Justin and I got to do was annotate the whole um, libretto. So throughout we got to sort of put in, you know, where moments had come from and just sort of our thoughts on different parts of the show. And what was interesting is we didn't do those together. Um, so we just saw one another's thoughts um, all at once, once, once we saw the sort of final draft and it was interesting like all of the things where we where we thought the same thing and also the 
times where we <laughs> disagreed. Completely different. Um, but it's a cool book. I think it's, it's um, what I really love about this book is not just the incredible photography. By and, Matthew Murphy. Yes. Um, and really great in-depth interviews with the actors and the rest of the creative team. But it really does give you an in-depth look at how a musical, and specifically this musical, um, got made. And um, it's a crazy process. And there are so many twists and turns and so many ups and downs. And it's really, it's really nice to see that there's a record of that. Was your work prior to Dear Evan Hansen in musicals? Had you no. done? No. No. Ever before? No. So that's a lot I'm of wondering about yeah, that. Yeah, some of the book talks about that, <laughs> like how none of us had any idea what we were doing, um, or we didn't, uh, and they had never written an original musical, so we all oh. did kind of figure it out as we went along. What made you want to write a musical, or did you know it was a musical right away? Upon I did. The well, idea? this is this is in the book actually, but they um, they had an idea. Benj had a, um, a fellow student who died in high school of a drug overdose. Um, and in the aftermath of that, he sort of watched as all of the other students kind of claimed that, oh, we were friends or, our life, you know, these weird connections that didn't really exist. And so that was kind of the kernel of the idea was that phenomenon. Um, and they, they were looking for a playwright who would write the book for this. And when they talked to me, I really wanted to write a musical. Um, I love musicals and I loved their music. And so they were like, we're not sure if this is a musical. And here, I have no idea what I'm talking about. And I was like, it's definitely a musical. <laughs> um, like, I remember so well arguing with them why it was a musical. Just being like, I don't know. Um, and I was, you know, I was under the impression, like, having written plays that were all original, I was like, well, what's so hard about writing an original musical? I do that all the time. And it turns out it is, it is different and harder. What um, makes it harder? I think it's that... The, the making of the story, like telling the story is really just the first layer. Like in a play, that's kind of the whole thing is like you tell this original story and you make it dramatically interesting. But really that's like what you need to start when you're writing a musical. Like it took us a long time just to figure out what happens in this musical and to agree on all of the fundamental, <laughs> exactly, plot moments in the show. <laughs> um, and, and then to like, in, in, it requires basically two or three people to think the same way, um, have the same thoughts at the same time and like merge mentally and artistically and emotionally in a way that's really messy, but, but kind of works. Yeah, you just need a marriage counselor like Michael Greif to come in and... Yes, exactly. Well, there was a lot, I mean, it's like, because ideally you, you want to watch a musical and feel like, oh, one person must have made this because the Evan that's singing and the Evan that's talking, those are the same person. Right. Um, and that, that's really challenging. Yeah. Noah, was this, is this your first time doing a musical? No. I know you've done some off-Broadway shows. I didn't know if any of them were musical. Yeah, Excuse I sort me. of like grew up in musical theater. My first job was the tour of Les Mis when I was 10. Wow. Um, and I, you know, I did a lot of musical theater. I did a lot of like, I sort of became, at age 12, became like the kid for developing new musicals in New York. I played like the kid in every reading of every <laughs> musical that was in development. Um, and I did that for a really long time. And then at a certain point, I sort of like fell out of love with musical theater and started doing new work off Broadway. And I've worked at like pretty much every off Broadway theater in the city. Um, and I've done some weird melodramatic play at all of them. Um, <laughs> And then I, you know, went to L.A. to be on a TV show. Um, and then it sort of took me going to L.A. and being on TV to, like, come back to musical theater. You just said a TV show, and someone back to me went, yes! <laughs> that show, I heard that. Uh, what is it like coming back? How does it feel coming back to musical theater? Again, daunting. I haven't sang, it's, and this is a hefty, hefty score, and I haven't sang in, like, six years, you know, uh, and so that was that was another another task, another undertaking, um, and a score such as this. It's it's intense, and it's uh, I mean it's a beautiful score. The music is really pretty, and it's it has so much lovely like variety within just the musical track of Evan alone. Um, he gets to show off every sort of aspect of 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 the of the vocal abilities, which is really fun, but. It's hard and exhausting and tiring. Cut out a lot of things out of my life in order to do it. No dairy, no alcohol, no smoking, no nothing. You know. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> are you enjoying that? 
I am, yeah. It's really nice. It feels it feels good to be doing those things for a reason, to yeah. be doing it for a for a job like this and to like move back to New York and like be here living like a nun. Um, That's a hard idea. <laughs> feels right. That's so crazy because there is I, 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 Noah's performance is so effortless. I will say, <laughs> um, and as someone who wasn't in rehearsals, like I don't know how much effort went into it because just seeing it, it just feels like so seamless and so easy, um, in the best Glad possible way. way. Glad it looks um, <laughs> like it, it's it's so remarkably smooth and just it, it perfectly paced and yeah. That's think. wild. And I think that's also, that is like the one, one of the wonderful major differences between Ben and your performance, actually. Like, Ben's performance is fantastic, but it is a performance of like, he is showing a lot of like what, what, this is not going to sound like a compliment, but I mean it as like a compliment. You know, he's really showing what he can do as an actor. And yeah. it doesn't necessarily feel effortless. It feels like there's a lot going on there. I mean that as 100% as a compliment, even though I know most people wouldn't use it as a compliment. And yours feels a little bit different than that. It feels a little bit smoother. It feels a little more, uh, almost almost casual in a certain way, while still hitting all of the beats. Ben Evan Platt, is, your well, is great. So. Well, Evan is, a, Evan is kind of a slippery character in a lot of ways, but I think one of them is that his, um, his tics and his issues aren't 100% defined or nailed down. And so that does open up room for interpretation and in terms of like the how extreme his social anxiety is yeah i think the main the main guideline in steven's book is is the words and the text and then sort of like what you do with that how that manifests itself like physically and not in in a in in sense of uh, uh speech is is something we had to like explore a lot yeah no that's the stuff that's like yeah you actually have to embody it yeah <laughs> <laughs> let's get some questions from the audience who has a question Hello, I'm Dylan. Hi, Dylan. Um, Noah, I was just wondering, what ways did you prepare for the role? What ways did I prepare for the role? Um, smoking, no dairy, no drinking. No smoking, no dairy, no drinking. Um, Why no dairy? Uh, you know, it just makes it harder to sing mucus. Um, yeah. I've, I'm here in New York, and all I want to do is just, like, cash a pizza, but, you know. Well, Ben, when Ben, um, the, like, the weekend or I guess the week after his last performance, mm -hmm. he, he sent me a list of like the things he had eaten over the last three days. It was like Chinese food, yeah. McDonald's. Oh, yeah. Because he went through like years of, of none of that stuff. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, he um, had to do it for a much longer time, and I don't think I could, which is why I'm only doing this job for two months. It's hard. <laughs> um, it's really hard. But, you know, when I, when I was first like sent the material, they sent me like, it was like a 50 page packet of like seven scenes and three full songs and I was like oh, okay um, <laughs> and I you know hired a vocal coach in Los Angeles and started singing again just dusted off the old pipes um, and just had to sort of like jump in uh, it was a fast fast process and about like a week after that I flew to New York to audition for it and I was smoking a cigarette when they told me I got the part, and I was like, <laughs> "Okay, yeah." It took. It was mostly like large life shifts, really. We're saving his life. You're right. <laughs> Frankly. Uh, next question. Thank you. Hi, um, I'm Casey, and Hi. I was wondering if you had any pre-show rituals. Um, yeah, it's actually a ritual that Ben started, and it's a ritual that I've been doing for for many years in my you know, throughout my theater career, uh, which is a dance party before the show, which I'm sure if you follow any of the people who are in the cast on Instagram, you see us being fools. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's the biggest thing. I put on, you know, I like some Shaka Khan, a little Ain't Nobody right before the show, really gets me going, really just gets me into like the sad headspace <laughs> of heaven, if you will. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I drink a lot of throat coat. I drink more than the recommended dosage <laughs> just throughout the show. Pastilles, if you know what those are. I eat a lot of those. What are pastilles? Um, Grethers, they're, they're like, it's like, it's basically just like fruit juice. Mm -hmm. It's like a hard, um, it's like a hard fruit snack, kind of. But they lubricate the throat. Julie Andrews taught me about them when I was younger. That's like her favorite, it's like her go-to trick. She always keeps like a giant box of them around at all times. 
um, but they taste like black currant, and they just lube up the cords in a lovely, lovely way. Uh, next question. Hi, I'm Jules. Hi. Um, I'm a drama major in my school, and I wa- we're making our own play soon. And I wanted to know what exactly do you do to like get in the mood and like show all those emotions that you do in your songs and like go back and forth. And how do you overdo it or hold it back? Like, I guess I don't know. It's. I think it's a little bit different every night. As much as I'd like to say I have like a way to just like snap into it. I think this show is really beautifully um, structured in a way that sort of uh, does the work for me. Um, the first opening monologue is like, you know, it's, it's kind of silly and, and uh, gets to show some like physical anxieties. So that like helps me get into like the physical ticks a little bit. And then it gets a little bit sadder and sadder as it goes. And I sort of just try to like go on the journey as wholeheartedly as possible. Well, and I think that part of the secret of the show um, is is the rest of the cast, yeah. um, and that uh, there, like everybody that you are acting with, is so uh, like Evan obviously stands out so much in the show, but they're like without Heidi and Cynthia mm-hmm. and Zoe and all of these people, like the the there's so much that that Evan is activated by those people. Um, Jennifer Laura Thompson really gets yeah. me going. She really gets me there, to be honest. The not to, not to take away any credit. Because um, whenever I think that, it's also like, but that monologue at the beginning is like, lights up, go. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, but they're, but those, those actors are, are so incredible um, and are so generous and giving, and so are you. And it's a really great company. It is, yeah. Stephen, what's your writing process like, and how was it for you going from sort of writing plays alone to essentially writing a play with these two musicians who are writing lyrics as well? Was it better? Was it, did you like collaborating more, or do you prefer? Writing yeah, alone? it was. A, I actually really do like collaborating. Um, I started writing this show at the same time as I started writing for TV, and I found that the two were somewhat similar um, in that there's not a lot of room for preciousness. Um, and your, your vision and your sort of creative drive have to sometimes take a backseat to the larger thing that you're making. Um, and I, di- I actually enjoy that, like the puzzle of that. Um, the process is really different. And, and this show, what, the way we work, decided to write it, because we weren't really sure how, was I wrote the first act like a play um, as if there were no songs. Um, and when we had talked about, we, we had worked out an outline together um, and we had places where we thought there would be songs. And so in those places, I either wrote really long um, overwritten monologues or I just wrote song here. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and based on that, um, then they wrote some stuff and, and it, it like it very very quickly after that really initial push of mine, it became difficult to separate who initiated what. Like it became this conversation mm-hmm. where I would write something and they would say, you know, the scene doesn't work with the song we have in mind, so change it to this. And then I would say, but my scene doesn't work without. And then it just kind of became this constant back and forth. Um, what was the what scene did you have the biggest argument over? It's a really good question. Thanks. The, um, <laughs> the thing I know the thing that we we fought amongst our but but not against each other but more just pulled our hair out the most was the opening always wow. the opening was the opening so hard the whole opening up to waving like mm. we knew waving through a window we knew we knew where it went and we we knew we wanted to get to it as soon as quickly as possible but we also knew that it couldn't be the first thing you heard right. in the show i think the thing that's the thing that i remember being most or i guess it probably wasn't but the thing that sat with me being being i as i recognized as the most different from dc yeah. to yes. broadway no it did we had a totally different there was a whole other number. song yeah um and we just couldn't the dilemma was we knew that we, we knew that Evan should, we, like, Waving is in some ways the opening song, but we knew we wanted music before that to introduce the fact that it was a musical. Right. 
Um, you also have to introduce but, like eight characters, and exactly. that's an impossible, impossible um, undertaking. So some of that was like that opening monologue. Um, we decided to think of that as an opening song in some ways. Mm. Like it has a musical quality because it's so long and so um, kind of theatrical. Yeah, it also um, is very time to music. Yes, it's very technical. The the way in which I have to say that monologue, and then we sort of I mess it up secretly. <laughs> like the thing that we couldn't, the thing that we just kept bumping on is we, is we wanted a song for everybody to sing, but we knew that all these characters are not in the same headspace. So it was bizarre to have them all singing, you know, how'd tradition you, from Fiddler. <laughs> um, or, you know, like every opening number that we thought of was wrong. And we just knew, it, we just kept coming back to, what's the story? What's the story? And we were like, it's the story of these two boys. And their moms. And their moms. <laughs> and so that was, that was the way that Benj and Justin were able to write that song was, it's not about these two women so much as it's about these two mothers dealing with these two boys right. who are in trouble in different ways. Yeah. Um, and so we set off, set out right from the beginning that this is the story about these two kids who go in different directions. That's, that, that's true. Cause I always, I've seen the show twice and the scene that always sort of has the most impact on me is the scene with uh, Evan's mom in the second yeah. act. Um, she's so amazing. She's such a wonderful actress. But Richard there is Jones, something Richard that Jones. everything suddenly clicks and you realize what this play is about. And it's about parenting. And it's that was about the end yeah. me. And that was actually, that was something that we sort of reverse engineered after um, the DC production because we knew that, that we finally realized in that production, that, oh, the end of this show is that Evan finally learns to be with his mother and his mother learns to be with mm -hmm. him. You know, it starts with him with a computer screen by himself and it ends with them on a couch together. Yeah. And so we were like, what's the best beginning if that's the ending? And so the best beginning for that story is really about this parent who can't reach her kid. And then finally in the end, she can. That was sort of the end for me. People ask me all the time, like, how do you relate to the character of Evan? And like, I don't that much. We're very, very, very different people. Um, but the end for me was his relationship with his mom. My parents divorced when I was like 13 and I, pretty much solely lived with my mother after that and you know we had to learn at the age of like 13 14 we had to learn how to my siblings had both left for college and it was just the two of us in the house and I sort of had to like navigate how to uh, what this like new relationship was going to be and that was sort of my in to the character of Evan as well I also think it's so great to hear uh, about the sort of evolution of the play and how everything changed because so often when we don't hear about plays or movies or anything until it's done and it's settled and it's spoken of as if it was like this one vision the whole time <laughs> and not like a constant battle to find what was right and uh, you know a constant process as well. Yeah, no, musicals especially I think are, they, they're just a very tricky form and um, tiny things make a huge difference and like little things it, part of my job as the book writer is to make sure that the songs are in the right place and are set up correctly and are like um we had this one the first workshop where we had the mother's song so big so small um it just it didn't quite land the way that it does now and what ended up what we ended up having to do and realized was um, words fail. We, it used to just be Evan with the, um, with the Murphys, that mm -hmm. section of the song. He just sort of sang this apology and then went to his mother. Um, and then Benj and Justin added the part of him by himself, sort of getting to the lowest place possible. And, um, and people who had seen the workshop and then had seen the production there were several different people who said, I love the new song with the mom. Like, that's so great. And I was like, you've, you've heard that already. That was in the last workshop. But because, but because Evan didn't get to that nadir enough, like, it, it just didn't land. Right. And, and that's, that's kind of the alchemy and the, it can drive you nuts. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's just so precise. Or they were just jaded friends looking for a thing to say. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. The, the song with the mom. Was great. Bye. It was like, which song? Which mom? <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I think I have time for a couple more questions. Next, right here. Hi, uh, I'm Bernie. Uh, Stephen, I want to say thank you for writing this thing that means so much to me. And um, I'm not going to start crying, but um, I just want to say thank you so much because it is, means so, so much to me. Well, no, I'm also you. a huge fan. Oh, um, thanks. 
Um, I was wondering if you can talk about, because your characters in the show are beautifully written, and they're both so sympathetic and you feel for them, but they're also flawed in many, many ways. And how, how did you manage to balance that? Like, like Zoe's character. Yeah, thank you so much, first of all. Um, the, the, we did always want these to be complicated, messy characters. Um, Zoe's an interesting example because we knew, this, this is really, I have to give credit to Benj and Justin for this because they, they knew they didn't want to write a song about a girl mourning her brother because we sort of, you sort of know what that is. You know, um, it's sad, and we get, but we get it. That's, that's, that's life. But the alternate side of that is a, is a girl who is fighting and struggling not to feel bad about her brother. Um, and I think that's the brilliance of that song, Requiem, is that it's really, it's about, and especially for an actor, where we are always sort of looking for something active to play. That's really, in that song, it's Zoe fighting not to feel anything. Um, and in saying that she doesn't feel anything, I think, and especially in Laura's beautiful performance, we see the depth of emotion that's there. She's really fighting to say that she doesn't care, but of course, she cares so much. Um, and so that, that was, for that character, that was definitely it. And then I think for Evan, that was always a struggle, was to try to figure out how to root for a character who fundamentally does something unforgivable in a lot of ways. Um, and how do we keep the audience interested in this character after he's done something um, wrong? Yeah, how do you um, make him likable? And I think part of that is, is the actor, absolutely. Um, and then part of that is every time in the show that Evan lies, we try to make sure that it comes from a place of wanting to make the other people feel better. This is a kid who you realize even in that first scene with Heidi who has had to make the people around him, the adults around him feel better about themselves and tries to kind of clean up the mess for his mother. And so when he sees Cynthia in the principal's office weeping and saying, I, like we need this letter to be true essentially, he feels like he can do nothing except in that next scene say that it is true. And so he's never lying I, I don't think for personal gain. He gets things that he wants through it, but it's always, even with Zoe, with if I could tell her, she's the one who says, why did he write that in his letter? And, she, and he sees that she needs it so badly that he has to lie. He's incapable of, of disappointing. So that's part of it. Yeah. Thank you. I think I have time for one more question. Who, it's right here, hi. 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 Hey. Um, my question is, like, who was your inspiration, like, for you, like, writing and you being an actor? That's a really, that's another really good question. Um, for this show in particular, we talked a lot about um, musicals with protagonists that do unlikable things. So I, we talked a lot about The Music Man and uh, Little Shop of Horrors, specifically, and a little bit Sweeney Todd. Um, just to try to figure out how does that work? Like, how do you, why do we care about a man that feeds people to plants? Um, and interestingly, I mean, we kept going back to this idea that the first thing he sings is poor. All my life, I've always been poor. Mm. Like, the first thing we learned about relatable him first. is that he's an outsider and that he's, you know, and so um, the music man, I don't know how they do it, but <laughs> it's just really good. When you're, when you're in the midst of, a, of writing a play like this and you're trying to figure everything out for your play, when you go and look at other work that you're hoping influences you, do you find it does influence and help you or does it hinder you in some way? I actually, I, I find that I have to stay away mostly from things. Like I didn't see Hamilton for the longest time. I didn't see Hamilton until after our show opened off Broadway, even though obviously I knew a lot about it and, and I, just, I just knew that it would... I just knew that it would do something. Yeah. Um, and, <laughs> uh, like sometimes it's helpful, and I, but mostly I find that it, 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 the problem with, with other people's stuff sometimes is that it makes you question your vision. Like you set out to do this thing mm -hmm. and then you see something else and you're like, maybe I should have set out to do that yeah. thing. Right. And, and it's like, try to just finish this thing. 
Maybe that beat is actually supposed to go there, yes. not yeah. where I have. Yes, like you just you be, you can become obsessive, um, but sometimes it's it's really helpful. Um, yeah, but it's tricky. It's like it's trying to distill what's useful in it, um, and not try to be like, oh well, their opening song was about the whole world, so we have to set up the whole world. You know, it's like that kind of. <laughs> Three intentions in this scene. No, oh, exactly. Like, yeah. Exactly. You made me five. I don't know. Uh, no, no. What made you, who made you want to be an actor? My siblings, really. Um, I didn't really ever have like an actor who I was like, that is the career I want. I have actors, careers who I, you know, would like to emulate and who I, who I look up to. But I, there was never really one person. It was sort of my older sister. She was an actor from a very young age. She didn't start working professionally since she was, until she was like 16. She went to Carnegie Mellon, and I sort of started working when I was like 10 and just kept doing it. But I only started acting because I just wanted to follow in her footsteps and I was a copycat. And I just wanted she's to do everything acting. she did. Yes, she is still acting. She's a great actor. She is. She's a, she's a big voiceover actor. Uh, she's got her own cartoon show. She plays the bratty older sister and the uh, bullheaded younger brother. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Who is an actor that you want to emulate now? Um, I, don't, I look up to a lot of actors. Alan Cumming, I love his career. I think there's like beautiful variety within his career that I very much strive for within my own. Um, we were just talking about Laurie Metcalf backstage. Oh. I, I love Laurie Metcalf. Oh, Laurie I love her in everything now. she does. She can do no wrong in my eyes. Um, Having a wonderful uh, renaissance right now. Or a yeah, very much return. so. Return. Very much so. Um, yeah, I got to do like a small reading with her last year, and I had one very small scene in this reading, but I got to, it was with her, and we just got to play for like an hour, and it, it's one of the most satisfying hours of my life. <laughs> Well, Stephen, congratulations on the wild success that is Dear Evan Hansen and everything that comes with it and the book that is on shelves now that yeah. people can get. Uh, it's called Through the Through the Window. And Noah, you are in the show for the rest of the month and a little into January, right? Uh, yeah, I think all the way through January I'll be there. Yeah. Um, and there is stuff afterwards that people can see you in um, that you're doing? Yeah, I have no. a movie that just got into... Yeah, no, and then I'm going to just bed this, for please. years. <laughs> please. I got, I'm in a movie that just got into Sundance, which is very exciting. It's called Assassination Nation. Yeah, um, yeah, and we'll see. And are tickets available for any of the shows? I mean, I imagine it's sold. I think it's sold out till September or something. I think there are tickets. I, I'm told that you're you, you can get tickets. You can get tickets. There's a cancellation line yeah. every day. If, you there's know, a lottery, room. right? Yes, there's a lottery that you can enter as many times as you want. Yeah, you know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, give it, uh, give them a round of a hand, guys. Let's hear it. Thank you, Stephen and Noah.